guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video which is going to be all about managing your blood sugars while at work or starting a new job as a type 1 diabetic. This video is going to share kind of the 10 tips that I have learned recently. So I have actually just started a new job and I am so so grateful to be in this position at this time in the world. I know employment is really hard right now um, so I'm so grateful for that and I've been in this new position for just over two weeks now and there have been a few hiccups along the way which I have learned from so I wanted to share with you guys everything that I've learned to keep myself as safe as possible while I am working and also at the end I will mention how I'm staying like COVID safe doing this kind of role so I am in a fairly customer facing position obviously I am taking a lot of precautions to keep myself safe as a diabetic in light of the current COVID situation. Let's just jump right in with my tips on how to keep your blood sugars stable while you're at work. And the very first thing is that meal prep will be your best, best friend. I cannot stress how important meal prep is as a diabetic or as anyone who's trying to keep healthy and eat foods that are going to nourish you and fuel you. So when you meal prep, you can calculate your carbohydrates at home, you can weigh everything out, you can then go to work knowing that everything you're going to be eating that day, you know the exact carb count for, you know the fibre for, but obviously you need to be minusing the fibre from the total carbs to work out how much you're going to inject. And you can even pre-calculate your bolus in um, dose based on what you're going to be eating and that makes it so much easier because it takes out all of the guesswork and it means that you're much much less likely to experience high or low blood sugars while you're at work because everything you're eating you have taken into consideration you've prepared it yourself you know exactly what's in there and you can get your doses as accurate as possible now obviously there will be occasions when you're too busy or if there's a social event going on at work i mean probably not right now but in the future hopefully we will be doing things like going out for lunch with your colleagues again and that at that point just enjoy it like you would a normal like meal out you have a whole video about carb counting and calculating insulin doses if you're not eating food that you've prepared at home so i'll leave the link to that here and obviously there will be situations like this during your working life but day to day meal prep as much as you can and that way you're setting yourself up for the most success possible throughout the week the second thing that i wanted to mention is making sure that your boss or your manager is aware of your diabetes because this is so important or across lots of different areas. So for me, I've started this new job at a time when I've also recently moved. And so I am in the process of trying to get my diabetes supplies prescribed here, which my basic ones have been fine, but for my Libra and stuff, I'm six weeks into my move and I still have not managed to get an appointment with the diabetes team to prescribe my Libra. That means lots of phone calls with the doctors, with pharmacists, and potential hopefully appointments soon. So I explained to my boss from the get-go that normally my diabetes will not inf interfere with my work and I shouldn't need to take time off for diabetes and that kind of thing, it's very well controlled. However, I am in the process of getting all of my medication prescribed here and it's being a real faff and I'm having to do potentially a few appointments and telephone appointments. So is that okay if I have to take a bit of time off to do those? And he was really understanding. My boss has been so great with my diabetes. He was just like, yep, just go do the appointments that you need to do. Make sure you can get all sorted here. Your boss needs to be aware that you will occasionally have to have diabetes appointments and they need to be okay with that. Equally, it's important to explain to them briefly about high and low blood sugars. Obviously, different people have different awareness of diabetes, but if you were to have a sudden low blood sugar in the office, you need to have someone there that understands what needs to happen and when an ambulance or someone else might need to be involved. So I explained to my boss like what a high blood sugar is, what a low blood sugar is, that normally a low blood sugar will not affect me at all. I'll just eat something and then go on with the rest of the day and you won't notice. I did say there may be the occasional one where I need a 10 to 20 minute break if it's a really bad one and I can't quite function normally. And I'm at the point where I don't need any outside help. I just need a bit of time to recover. If you're comfortable enough, you may also want to explain to them about glucogel and how to use glucogel. So I said also, if I do have a really, really bad hypo and I can't move myself, I can't function, if I pass out or if I can't eat, then I will ne you'll need to administer this thing called glucogel. It's this little white tube and you just have to squeeze half of it into the inside of my mouth and rub it into the inside of my cheek. Sorry, it might be a bit gross, um, but then just call an ambulance and it'll be fine. And I showed him where I keep my glucogel in my handbag and I said I might also bring one in and put it in my desk, although I can't do that yet because I haven't got any more prescribed and all of mine are out of date. 
Um, but he's really understanding. He's like, yep, yeah, cool, fine. I know what to do. Often as well, it's not just for your safety, but it's for your boss or your colleague's peace of mind that they know that if there was an emergency to happen, they would know what to do rather than having an employee or a colleague pass out and then be completely useless. It works both ways. It reassures the both of you that you're going to be in a safe working environment. On the note of hypos, it's also incredibly important that you take hypo snacks with you everywhere. You never know how many hypos you might have in one day. And so I recommend keeping hypo snacks in your handbag, in or briefcase or whatever you take to work, in your desk at work, and also in your car if you drive to work or if you drive during your working day. So I have a car at work and I'm gonna put a whole host of hypo snacks in there. If you're not sure what hypo snacks work best for you or which are the best ones to keep as kind of portable options, I have a whole video about that, which I will link to this one. But my main go-tos for fast-acting sugar are dextro tabs or gluco tabs, and I'll leave links to those in the description box below. And then some form of cereal bar. I normally keep a lower carb cereal bar and a higher carb cereal bar, depending on like how severe my low is. And I'll keep a few of each of those at work so that if I were to ever have a hypo at work, I know that I'm sorted and I'm not going to need to go out to buy hypo snacks last minute. Another thing to consider is what food and drink is going to be available throughout the day. Now, if you are working in an office situation or kind of anywhere really, one of the main things is going to be coffee. And I don't know about you, but I don't drink coffee as much when I'm home at the weekend as when I'm at work. But you need to remember to bolus for your coffee if you're the kind of person whose blood sugar spikes with caffeine, aka me. A lot of people, caffeine will spike your blood sugar even if you have a flat black Americano, no sugar, no milk, nothing. The caffeine can spike your blood sugar. So please remember to bolus for your coffee. And equally, if there are any snacks around the office or in your workplace, don't just mindlessly graze and think you'll sort it out later. Please bolus for snacks. If people come in, I don't know if it's someone's birthday and there's cake or if there's just, I don't know, some whatever snacks out in the office, make sure you bolus for them. Or you might also like to take your own low carb or no carb snacks so that if everyone is enjoying, I don't know, someone's bought biscuits in or whatever and you don't want to bolus, you can just eat your low carb snack and not feel left out. So taking some nuts or some Greek yogurt or anything that you find that doesn't spike your blood sugar, keep some of that at the office as well for those times when maybe you don't want to bolus. Something that is equally important and really easily forgotten, especially if you're in a real flow during work, is to hydrate. Either take yourself a big bottle of water that you can refill up or have a big glass at your desk and never let it run empty. As soon as it gets empty, go to the tap and fill it up again. And just make sure that you are constantly drinking throughout the day because being dehydrated is one, just really bad for you in general, but also can increase your blood sugar because your blood concentration gets higher because there's less water in it. And so you really need to make sure that you are constantly hi um, hydrating. If you're really bad at this and you always forget, like I said, keep a water bottle next to you. Also maybe just set yourself little, little reminders throughout the day to check how much water you've drunk. And if you haven't drunk enough, then get drinking. I have just spoken about bolusing for snacks, but one thing that you also want to consider is where do you want to inject at your workplace? So I'm personally comfortable injecting at a desk in front of people. But one thing that I did do was check if the people around me are comfortable with me doing that. Not because it's, I feel embarrassed or because they should like, if they're just like, that's awkward, that I don't really care about their opinion. But there are people who faint at the sight of needles or blood. And so you need to check because I did that at school once I started injecting and there was a girl next to me and I didn't realize she was really sensitive and she fainted. So you never want to cause that for someone and you don't want to make someone uncomfortable. But if, if they're just being annoying and they're like, oh, that's weird, then, you know, screw them, inject anyway. You're diabetic, this is your life, your health, you need to inject, right? But if someone genuinely has a phobia of needles or they're really genuinely uncomfortable, then I wouldn't inject in front of them and maybe I'd take myself to the loo or to a quieter corner in the office to inject. So just work out if, number one, if you're comfortable injecting at your desk and if you are, then just check that there's no one else around you that has like a phobia of needles. And if you're not, then have a scout around and see where you want to inject. But don't try and hide your diabetes. So if you don't want to inject at your desk, that's fine. But still, I would say tell people that you're diabetic and then 
because sometimes you can feel awkward if you're just going off somewhere to inject and you might think oh people are wondering what I'm doing but if you explain to them look I'm just gonna go and inject I'm taking my insulin pen with me this is what I'm doing then you won't have that niggling thought in your mind that maybe people are thinking you're going off and doing something weird I don't know I, I might be the only one that thinks this but I sometimes feel like if I go off somewhere to inject people are like what are you doing um so I always explain myself because no one's ever gonna judge you for injecting insulin and if they do you don't need them in your life <laughs> on that note it's also worth keeping spare needles spare test strips if you use a finger pricker and pair spare mm, spare pump supplies if you use a pump in your drawer at work because you never know like i said with hypo snacks you never know when something could break when you could run out of something i always keep needles and test strips in my handbag anyway but you never know if maybe yesterday you used up your emergency test strips and then you not got any at the office or whatever keep them at work as well because the more places that you have them the less likely it is that you're ever going to be caught out and have to go home in the middle of the day to get some needles because that's not a situation you want to be in it's really awkward and it just really distracts you from your work something that has been absolutely vital for me to keep my blood sugars stable while working in the office is getting my workout done before work there are so many reasons for this number one it means that you're not tempted to skip it later in the afternoon if you say you're going to work out in the evening often you probably won't because you'll be tired or there'll be plans after work it also means that it helps me personally to avoid the kind of dawn phenomenon when I wake up. I'm more insulin resistant in the morning, so getting the workout in really helps with that. But also it increases your insulin sensitivity after your workout. So if there are a few hours when you're sat at the desk, not really doing a lot, having done that workout before you sit down really helps to prevent blood sugars spiking later. And I know in England right now, we are back in a second lockdown, but next week I am gonna film a full week of workouts for you. They're all home workouts that I do. So you can see my kind of workout routine and what I'm doing to manage my blood sugars optimally. So subscribe if you want to see that next week. But speaking of exercise, something again that is so important for preventing those blood sugar spikes later on in the day is to make sure that you're getting some form of movement in during your working day. Now I'm really lucky at the moment because a lot of my job as well is away from the desk. I'm doing quite a lot of walking. So in my first week at work, I actually walked 120 kilometers over the course of the week. Now I normally won't be walking this much, but it was just in the first week I was getting used to the area and walking around and exploring. Um, so that's why I walked so much, but I will still be doing a fair amount of walking throughout the day. So I'm quite sorted. However, there are still days when I'll be just at the desk. So it's really important to maybe go for a walk during your lunch break, even eat for half an hour and then walk for the rest of the half an hour. Put a podcast in, put some music in, listen to an audio book, whatever, just get out for a walk. And number one, it really helps you like mentally refresh, blows all those cobwebs away. But most importantly, it's so important for your blood sugars because if you just stay sedentary all day, throughout the whole day, your blood sugars will start to slowly creep up. And it's just not good for you anyway. You want to keep the blood flowing. But equally, on the opposite end of things, if you're doing a more manual job or like me and you're walking a lot, then it's really important to also factor this into your insulin doses. So that first week when I was walking so much, I was really reducing my mealtime bolus doses because I knew that if I was walking like 10 kilometers after lunch, then I'm gonna be dropping a lot. And I also made sure to keep lots of hypo snacks on me. The last thing I wanted to mention in terms of living with diabetes and managing it while at your workplace is how to deal with potentially ignorant comments from colleagues. Now, often comments that happen in the workplace around my diabetes have been people just not knowing and either just being curious and wanting to know or saying something that's completely wrong like oh can you eat that or oh you don't look diabetic that kind of thing where they're not people aren't being malicious they're just uneducated so try and not take offense to these comments and try and not become defensive and just see it as a teaching moment so recently i was like we were people like oh how are you doing blah blah you know when you get in the morning and i was like oh, i'm actually really tired like my diabetes kept me up last night i woke up three times because of low blood sugars 
and they were like oh it affects your sleep and i was like yeah it really affects your sleep um you know low blood sugars will wake you up in the middle of the night i have alarms to wake me up if i go high and sometimes you can have days where it just will be really low the whole night or really high the, high, the whole night and you're awake pretty much the whole night and it can really affect you and they're like oh my gosh i didn't realize that and they were like oh do you have type one or type two and then i said all type one and they're like oh which one is that i know one's worse and one's better so i briefly explained and we ended up having like a 15 minute conversation about diabetes and how it affects your life and like what's a good blood sugar range i showed him like the tomato app and everything and he was like oh that's so cool um so rather than get defensive about those moments use it to educate people because the more people that are educated about type 1 diabetes, what it's really like living with type 1 diabetes, the less and less often we're going to hear these annoying comments. It's literally Diabetes Awareness Month this month. So make people aware of what your life is like with diabetes. Because at the end of the day, the more we educate people, the more support we're going to receive and the more you're going to feel understood. And that's one of the main battles I find living with type 1 diabetes is I just feel like a lot of people don't understand and you don't feel seen. So if you can educate people, then why the heck not? And I did say I was also going to mention how I am keeping COVID safe while at work. Now, the first thing I want to say is, especially as a diabetic or anyone who is considered as vulnerable or compromised, don't do anything that you don't feel safe doing. If you get asked at work to do something that you think is gonna put you at risk, please say no. And I know that's so much easier said than done, but you have to think about your health. When I'm at work, I wear a mask at any point when I'm not at my desk. So our desks are all distanced. And if I'm sat down, I don't need to be wearing my mask. As soon as I get up, I put my mask on. We all have hand sanitizer at the door, at the end of every row of desks, and we all have an individual hand sanitizer as well. So make sure you keep that on you. And if you leave the office at any point and come back, sanitize again wash your hands as often as you can throughout the day and also don't be afraid to tell people to keep their distance i know as you like especially because i've started a new job it can be tricky because obviously no one's doing a handshake anymore but the more you get to know people the closer they kind of encroach on your personal bubble unintentionally but it's okay to just say oh can we keep this distance please just because you know you can even say look i'm diabetic and i'm vulnerable and i'm very wary of covid please keep your distance if people want to take their mask off to talk to you and you don't feel comfortable with that, keep your mask on. And you can just say, would you mind wearing a mask because I'm a vulnerable person and I don't feel comfortable being so close without a mask on. And people really won't care, like they won't be offended. I think as long as you just explain to people what your boundaries are with COVID, while also obviously following the legal guidelines in your country, then that's, that's all you can do really. So that is everything I wanted to say about working as a type one diabetic and keeping your blood sugar stable or starting a new job as a type one diabetic. I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Uh, it has been a bit of trial and error for me as I've been getting into the swing of things. So I really wanted to share what I have learned over the last few weeks with you guys so that if you were to start a new job or if you are just currently working and feeling a rut with your blood sugars, you can action these steps straight away and feel comfortable that you're gonna be healthy, happy, and have stable blood sugars throughout your working day. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like because it really helps me to know what kind of videos you are enjoying watching and which videos are informative and helpful for you. But for now, that is it for this one and I'll see you in the next one.